Democrat from New York, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Welcome back to Primetime. Thank you for having me. So what do you think? Lessons learned, adjustments? Well, I think there's a lot that that happened on Tuesday. One thing that we know for sure is we have a great opportunity right ahead to expand on the senator's strengths. We're about to have primaries in the industrial Midwest, where Bernie Sanders has had a tremendous uh, record and track record on trade, where we are going to expand in our strengths with younger voters, with Latinos, but also with working class voters. Bernie Sanders beats Trump, and he's very strong with voters who make less than $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm which, by the way, is 60 percent of the American public. So we're really excited in reaching out to working families and championing the cause, saying, yes, we are the stronger candidate against Trump, Trump, and we can do so while advocating for a living wage, while addressing our climate crisis, by tackling our health care crisis in this country, and making sure that people aren't dying because they can't afford insulin in the United States of America. Fair points all. Uh, let's talk politics and then we'll talk policies. Politics first didn't happen last night mm -hmm. uh, on two levels. One, uh, you saw Biden overperform from what was expected. I mean, let's be honest. At this time last week, there was a lot of talk about whether he'd make it through Super mm -hmm. Tuesday. Overperformed with people in the suburbs um, that you people need. Overperformed with what we call white working class people. Uh, you know, I, we both hate the demographics, but they are what they are. That's those are the labels. Um, why did he overperform? How do you win back, especially in a place like Michigan, where Bernie Sanders must beat Biden? Well, I think one of the things that we saw, and first of all, you know, of course, we want to be good sportsmen in this process and to congratulate the former vice president on his uh, performance. But he overperformed because he had low expectations. And I think that's one thing that uh, we have to clarify. It was kind of a last minute consolidation of um, some of the more mm -hmm. moderate and, and conservative Democratic candidates in the cycle, which happened right before this race. True. And for folks who are making that decision in the 72 hours before the race, where you have these dramatic developments, that is compelling, but that is an event and it is a moment. It, it is not necessarily a movement, True. which is what the senator has been building, not just over the past year, but, the, for, but over the past several years. True again. Also, something to notice last night, his performance among Latinos will help put critical states in play in November. Nevada, True. Arizona, Colorado. These are states that we need to be competitive, and the senator and Senator Bernie Sanders is delivering key constituencies that we need to win in November. I agree with the criticism uh, that there were low expectations. That is actually a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. um, now, it has to be a concern for the Sanders campaign that so many people who broke late broke against him. That's not new. Mm -hmm. What is new, 2016 versus 2020, is the idea of the movement. And I say it all the time, uh, Congresswoman, that Bernie is the only one who's got a movement behind him. Now the Biden people have beaten me up for it. Um, you know, whatever, that's the business. They didn't show up for you last night. Mm -hmm. The young people who you are promising to the party that you can bring in didn't come in anywhere. How mm -hmm. do you explain that with any optimism? Well, I think one thing that we have to see, and one huge question is the largest prize of the night, which is California. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be having hundreds of delegates decided, which was the yes. largest prize yesterday, which Bernie Sanders won, not won by a little, won by a lot. Bern we are going to see exactly what that lead looks like Yeah, in we have the to see. Days. It'll take days. You know, it's hard to know. He's certainly ahead. But you guys wanted like 60% of the delegates. You're looking at like 40, 45 right now. But let's play that out. Let's not play with the ifs. Well, we let's can't get too too greedy sometimes. <laughs> well, but look, you know, it's a greedy business. You know what I mean? It's a greedy. You need everything you can get because sure. you are at a disadvantage sure. going into the convention. And let's talk about why. Let's be honest about it here. Uh, the use of the word establishment, okay? I think the case can be made that you lost to Democrats last night. Not the establishment. There are too many different demographics that came to play on Biden's side. You can't dismiss them all as part of the problem. So... You are injecting a progressivism into a party that is mostly center left. First, let's talk about the language. You have to be careful about establishment because you make people feel like African Americans, like all of a sudden they're part of the problem. Well, I do think that there's a kind of a disingenuous um, com conflating of what we mean. Uh, the fact of the matter remains that Bernie Sanders is now the only front runner in this 
in this race that does not take corporate lobbyist money. Mm -hmm. He does not take money from health insurance, health insurance executives. He does not take money from fossil fuel lobbyists. And he does not have closed door. Um, he does not have closed door fundraisers with elites. And uh, and I think that that is an important distinction. Now, if you voted, um, if you did not vote for Senator Sanders last night, that doesn't mean you're part of the establishment. And I think every American knows that Washington has. There's a very strong grip of special interests in Washington. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders has a unique integrity. He is not bought, and he has zero uh, corporate lobbyist money financing his campaign. You think that Biden is, is bought? I think that there's a, there are real issues with um, where where campaign money comes from, and I think it's not um, it's not a secret. This is how many of the if even swing district members won their races in 2018 because they do not take corporate PAC money. There are some that are very progressive. There are some that are very conservative. But one of the through lines that we saw in 2018 was that if you won your race, you likely did not take corporate PAC money. It is a huge trust issue with voters, and I think that Bernie Sanders has that trust. What he says, he will do everything he can to deliver. I, I, I get you conceptually. I think it gets a little tricky for voters because they get caught up in the mm -hmm. numbers. Sanders has such a massive money machine. You're right. Where it's coming from is different. Uh, it's a fair point of distinction. Um, but the money story right now is that Biden had like $18.50 in campaign terms, <laughs> right? He had like $2.2 million, spent $2 million in the last week. Bernie Sanders 10 x him, but didn't get it done. Last uh, point that I want for you, and you know you're always invited here to continue the case for the senator. Uh, us versus them. Mm -hmm. I do not accept uh, to, at this point the comparisons between Donald Trump and your candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's fair because one of them is pushing a malignancy in this country that division works. And... Bernie Sanders, even at his worst, doesn't approach that. But you guys do play the us versus them game. Mm -hmm. And it makes me wonder what you think the future is at the convention. Mm -hmm. Because either you split off and do like in Europe, where you guys are the Labor Party, or the Green Party, you know, you have like a real other party, or the us versus them thing, how does it not come back to bite you when you come to convention time, when it seems like everybody else is part of your problem? Well, one thing that I would say and that I hope just for the sake of the party overall is that this does not get to a brokered convention. I think that is really important. I think that hurts the nominee, whoever that nominee is. I think it's really important that the American people and that the Democratic electorate, that the Bernie voters agree with that or is that AOC on her decide own? Well, I think, I think uh, you know, overall, I think that the senator has reiterated his point that he believes that the person with the most delegates... He switched um, the position, AOC. We both know win. that. 2016, he was saying something different. Look, mm -hmm. I get politics. I don't mean... I'm, I'm not beating up the senator well, I can unfairly, tell you, Chris, but that he changed it. Well, I can tell you, Chris, that my opinion and how I feel is that we have to unite as a party, and the way that we do that is by deciding our nominee at the polls. It's extraordinarily important. Some things are bigger than a primary, and defeating Donald Trump is extraordinarily important. That's why I think Bernie, supporting Bernie Sanders is very important. He's, he performs better than Biden does at the polls against Trump. He performs better in the industrial Midwest. And guess what? As we learned in 2016, you can get all the votes you want against Trump. If you don't get the Electoral College, mm. we will not get the presidency back. That we can true. get millions more votes than Donald Trump. Get we need right to places. win Michigan, yeah. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, which are all the states that Bernie Sanders wins against Trump and outperforms Biden in many of these states. Well, that's this is why... due to trade. This is due to immigration. This is due to a lot of different issues in which the senator has, exempt, has exemplified a commitment to working class people. I hear you. And the most important poll is going to come out next Tuesday. Absolutely. And we will see what happens in Michigan. And that will really do a lot to shape the race. Every time there's an opportunity to discuss these issues going forward, you know you have a place here if you want it. Same goes for the senator. And Congresswoman, I deeply appreciate that. Absolutely. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the best to you and good luck to the candidate going Thank forward. Thank you so very much. All right, let's be very honest. About